So, Adi, I think you can start the thing. Okay, sir. I welcome you all to the weekly Monday session of ISA PG teaching program. Topic for today discussion is challenges in the anesthetic management of pheochromo cytoma surgery. We all know as anesthesiologists, this is a very challenging uh, case in the perioperative uh, period. I would now welcome Dr. Bajwa sir, who is the Honorary Secretary of ISA National. Over to Bajwa sir. Thank you, Dr. Swati. I welcome everyone, all the students, all the audiences, senior people. Uh, today's topic actually, in fact, is a very important topic. Although we may not encounter these type of cases every day, but uh, whenever we encounter these cases, they just give you a, almost a, sometimes a hell lot of experience. And sometimes they are very difficult cases. The surgery part may be, it has improved over the years with so many techniques coming, the robotic surgery also coming up for the surgical resection of PO. But the medical management, the preoperative preparation and the interoperative crisis, they have always been challenging. Although we have come across many new drugs, including the for the preoperative preparation of these patients. But somehow every patient is different, every case is different, and we encounter multiple challenges. I think today the August gathering here will be definitely be showered with a good knowledge and the discussion and swing this class after this class will be very helpful for everyone whether you are working in a medical college or in a corporate sector or in a private sector also. So I think today's class will be very important and everyone should be remaining mute during the class when the discussion starts. Everybody is welcome to ask a question. Um, without wasting time, I'm uh, handing back the mic to Dr. Swati again. Before we start today's session, let us seek the blessings of Ma Saraswati. Thank you all. I would like to request the audience members to adhere to few housekeeping rules. Please keep yourself on mute while the session is going on. And please feel free to write any questions or queries in the chat box, which will be addressed after the talk. I would like to welcome Dr. Debulina, who is senior resident at Pushpanjali Hospital, New Delhi who is also uh, my screen, screen co-coordinator. I request Dr. Debulina to introduce today's faculty. Good evening, everybody. I would like uh, to welcome our esteemed faculty, Dr. Alka Chabra, ma'am, who is professor and head in Department of Anesthesiology and Critical Care. Her area of interest are airway, pediatric anesthesia, and trauma anesthesia. In her achievement, she is a BLS and ACLS coordinator. She has been an organizing chairperson in 24th Annual Conference of Rajasthan. She has been faculty as a speaker in many state and national conferences. 
she has many publications in her name she has been a co-author and author in various books now i would like to introduce to our second uh, esteemed <clears throat> faculty who is dr anil uh, mr dr anil kumar bhaiwa he is the associate professor in department physiology and critical care anjali medical colleges in his name and he has been awarded in best medical medical publication and been also awarded as a gold medal for hk gupta in best paper ratsikon 2023 now i would request dr alka chabra ma'am to our today's speaker dr arzu uh thank you dr dibulina uh, first of all i want to thank you and express my gratitude to dr sukminder singh bajwa for extending to me the opportunity on this esteemed platform platform of isa pg online classes thank you so much sir and and as dr S uh, sir and dr swati all told you something about pheochromocytoma it is definitely an intricate considerations and presents a challenge to all of the anesthesiologists who are conducting these cases now uh, as per published data it has been shown that 25 to 50% of the hospital death of the patient with unmanaged or undiagnosed pheochromocytoma occur during induction of anesthesia or during operative procedures for some other conditions whenever the patient has come for other procedures and as we all know that uh, treatment part always and all uh, always include uh, the surgical resection of the tumor most of these patients require anesthesia so uh, it necessitates the meticulous preoperative uh, management involving a multidisciplinary team approach and uh, the tailored anesthetic techniques to mitigate the hemodynamic uh, fluctuations and also the complications post operatively so uh, uh, focusing on the today's topic that is anesthetic challenges in the patient with uh, pheochromocytoma i would like to introduce our uh, pg resident dr arzu she is a resident in uh, first uh, final year resident in gitanjali medical college and hospital udaipur rajasthan so i uh, request uh, dr arzu to please uh, share your slides and uh, start your case presentation good evening everyone my case presentation is a 40 year old male a 40 year old male known case of hypertension since 5 year presented with chief complaints of excessive sweating since 2 months awareness of his own heart rate it since 2 months and tiredness since 2 months history of presenting illness patient was apparently all right until 2 months ago when he started having sudden onset palpitations 2 to 3 times a day each episode lasting for few minutes it's it aggravated on defecation and coughing and relieved by itself it was also associated with epi sorts of excessive sweating since 2 month which was aggravated by stress and exertion patient also complained of tiredness since 2 month which was continuous with no aggravating and relieving factors no history of heat intolerance weight loss hair loss muscle weakness and tremors were uh, noted no history of uh, nausea and vomiting no history of increase or decrease in urine output or polydipsia no history of fever headache or any involuntary movement and no complaints of chest pain breathlessness or any episode of syncope or prolonged fastival fasting intervals no history of any change in visual disturbances pathological fractures or muscle weakness history of he had a history of hypertension since 5 years no history of bronchial asthma thyroid disease tuberculosis snoring ischemic heart diseases uh, syncope attacks or stroke no history of any known psychiatric illness surgical or anesthetic exposure or prolonged hospitalization patient was on mixed diet normal appetite he had normal uh, bowel and bladder activities no non addictions uh, drug allergies or sleep disturbances uh, patient was taken tablet telmisartan 40 mg since 5 years uh, so after which ta uh, tablet uh, metoprolol and tablet amlodipine was added uh, two years ago 
general examination patient uh, was conscious oriented to time place person and was cooperative he weighs 65 kg his height was 177 centimeters his bmi was 22.4 kg per meter square uh, no pallor ectaris clubbing cyanosis lymphadenopathy uh, pedal edema or elevated jvp was seen uh, his pulse rate was 102 per minute regular good volume in right right radial artery with all peripheral uh, pulse is pal uh, palpable equally no radio radial radio femoral delay blood pressure was 186 by 102 mmhg in left arm in sitting position respiratory rate was 16 breaths per minute abdominal thoracic breathing his spo2 was 98 percent on room air uh, no enlargement of thyroid was noted. The uh, spine uh, had a normal alignment and curvature. Spinous pro uh, process was palpable. No loose teeth or artificial dentures. Mouth opening, three finger breath, modified malampati score, grade one. Upper lip bite test was grade one. And normal leg movement in all directions was seen. His uh, systemic examination showed CVS S1, S2 normal and no murmur. CNS uh, conscious oriented to time, place and person. Uh, and RS examination showed bilateral air entry present equal on both sides. No added sound. Per abdomen showed uh, the, uh, soft non-tender, no organic megaly. Hence, to summarize my case, a 40-year-old uh, male patient presented with complaint of excessive sweating, tiredness, and palpitation since two months. He was a known case of hypertension. His physical examination revealed a regular pulse of 102 per minute and a blood pressure of 186 by 102 mmHg. Uh, so, Arzu, based on your clinical features and history, what would be your differential diagnosis in this case? My differential diagnosis will include essential hypertension, and, uh, renovascular hypertension, hyperthyroidism, uh, pheochromocytoma, panic attack, like, uh, uh, neurogenic causes uh, such as uh, epilepsy, uh, any cardiac causes, Cushing syndrome, um, uh, or uh, uh, hyperparathyroidism with toxinemia and pregnancy. So, whether further investigation were done in this patient? After further invest, uh, all the blood sampling uh, and screening were sent. After which we uh, noted uh, there was an increase in serum, um, no meta uh, nephrin levels. Uh, it was raised up to seven thousand three hundred and ten picogram per ml, and his CT scans uh, showed bilateral uh, uh, adrenal mass. Thus, patient was uh, posted for elective open bilateral adrenal lipid. So the patient was uh, diagnosed as a pheochromocytoma. Okay, yes. so uh, coming to the directly to the case of pheochromocytoma, uh, what is pheochromocytoma? Pheochromocytoma is a rare catecholamine secreting tumor which arises from chromaffin cells of adrenal medulla. As the name suggests, it's a dark colored cell tumor. Uh, this dark color comes when these chromaffin cells else are stained with chromium salt. Uh, hypertension cases in pheochromocytoma is less than 0.1%. The incidence is, is equal in both male and female, and they are more prevalent in third and fifth uh, decade of life. So what is the rule of 10% that is associated with pheochromocytoma? Pheochromocytoma follows a classic rule of 10. There is 10% incidences of extra adrenal mass, 10% are malignant, 10% are familiar, and 10% are bilateral, and 10% they are 10% uh, cases are present in children. Uh, actually, this uh, 10 no, uh, rule of 10 is uh, nowadays uh, considered as an outdated uh, rule because, uh, because of advancement in the technology and uh, diagnostic tests. It has been that these percentage, uh, percentage have been increased. For example, uh, familial cases are seen in 30 to 40 percent patients. And also the external gland uh, uh, pheochromocytoma is also 24 percent. So uh, if it is present in adrenal medulla, it is known as pheochromocytoma. So what is uh, paraganglionomas and what are the common sites of these paraganglionomas? Paraganglioma's are extra adrenal tumors which derive from extra adrenal site of chromaffin cells. Else, uh, the most common site for paraganglioma is organ of Zucker candle, which is pre present at the bifurcation of iota. Uh, 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 and other extra adrenal site includes infra uh, infra diaphragmatic ek, uh, uh, th mediastinal thoracic sympathetic chain urinary bladder carotid sheet carotid body and rarely it may also include urethra geni uh, genital tract prostate spermatic cord liver and heart 
So can you uh, brief? Uh, can you give the brief anatomy of adrenal gland and what does it secrete? Ad yes, ma'am. Adrenal gland is a retroperitoneal gland. It is a pyramidal shaped gland which is present above the kidney. It is also known as suprarenal gland, and uh, it weighs around five to uh, four to five grams, and uh, its size is four into three into one centimeter. Uh, the right-sided adrenal gland is in uh, is in close proximation with right hemidiaphragm, liver, and IVC, whereas left is in cl close proximation with uh, the spleen, uh, tail of pancreas and iota 85% uh, uh, constitutes of cortex and 15% constitutes of medulla uh, adrenal cortex is further divided into zona glomerulosa uh, zona fasciculata and zona and zona reticularis zona glomerulosa secretes mineralocorticoids uh, fasciculata secretes uh, glumo, uh, glucocorticoids and reticularis secretes sex hormones and, and uh, 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 adrenal medulla secretes stress hormones such uh, as, as uh, catecholamine such as non-epinephrine, epinephrine and dopamine. So, a zona uh, that uh, adrenal medulla secretes catecholamines. So, what is the pathway for the synthesis and the breakdown of these catecholamines? Phenylalanine present in our blood is uh, broken down into tyrosine through phenylalanine hydroxylase. This tyrosine is taken up by chromaffin cells where it is converted into dopa by tyrosine hydroxylase enzyme. Dopa is further broken down into dopamine by dopa decarboxylase where they are taken up by electron dense granules uh, where dopamine is broken down into uh, non-adrenaline by uh, dopamine beta hydroxylase and it is non-adrenaline is converted into adrenaline by PNMT enzyme. Whenever there is a stress response, these hormones are secreted, and after which they are taken up by nerve endings, where adrenaline and non-adrenaline are further broken down into uh, meta-adrenaline and meta-non-adrenaline adrenaline through COMT enzyme and uh, their further breakdown uh, is vinyl mendemlic acid through MAO inhibitors and they are secreted uh, and then they are excreted from kidney and liver. So, uh, what is the ratio of secretion of norepinephrine and epinephrine in case of normal adrenaline as well as in cytoma? How is it? it? Um, in normal uh, uh, in normal adrenaline gland, the ratio of epinephrine to non-epinephrine is 85 is to 15. Uh, and this ratio is uh, usually reversed uh, in pheochromocytomas at, as they are predominantly non-epinephrine secreting tumors. Uh, doctor, doctor, uh, doctor, are you... Yes, sir. What are the clinical features of the pheochromocytoma? Sir, clinical features includes a classic triad of a headache, palpitation, and, and perspiration. The five uh, common P seen in pheochromocytomas are pain, pressure, palpitation, perspiration, and pallor. Also, uh, they are associated with many cardiovascular, genito, uh, gastrointestinal, and metabolic syndromes, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dr. Anil, so uh, are there any clinical features that are based on secretion of uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine in these tumors? Yes, ma'am. If the tumor is predominantly non-epinephrine secreting, it will show uh, systolic and diastolic hypertension with reflex bradycardia and the most common symptom is headache. If it is predominantly epinephrine secreting, then patient will present with systolic hypertension, diastolic hypertension and tachycardia along with uh, the metabolic symptoms such as hyperglycemia, hypercalcemia, polyuria and polydipsia. And if it is a dopamine secreting tumor, it will present with nausea and vomit the most common symptoms. Okay. So, what are the patho uh, pathophysiology associated with these clinical features? In pheochromocytoma, there is uh, increase in the amount of catecholamine sec uh, secretions. They uh, act on alpha adrenergic receptors and beta adrenergic receptors. Their primary action is on alpha adrenergic receptor where they increases the uh, systemic vascular resistance, thus increasing the blood pressure of the patient. And their action on beta adrenergic receptor causes increasing in the heart rate and patient may experience palpitation and tachycardia. Uh, these patients can land up into hypertensive crisis, which may present as a headache or their uh, uh, these crises also increase in the demand of the myocardium um, and uh, patient may experience some uh, ta uh, end target organ damage. Uh, oh, alpha oh. 1 adrenergic 
receptors present on cutaneous blood vessels increases the systemic vascular resistance and decreases the blood flow uh, and uh, symptoms like pallor may also be present. Their action on beta adrenergic receptor present in liver increases the amount of glucose in the blood. Their action on uh, uh, muscle splendor causes tremors. They also increase sympathetic activity which, uh, uh, which increases the limbic system activity and patient may present with anxiety. They feel as if they are dying. Thus, a sense of impending doom is present. Their action on, uh, on sweat glands result into perspiration. So, what are the organ specific complications of fibrom cytoma? The organ specific complication includes in heart uh, uh, angina, cardiomyopathies, arrhythmias, and myocardial infarction. In brain, stroke, and encephalopathy, vascular damage may show limb, limb ischemia and postural hypotension. In kidney, acute renal failure and hematuria. Uh, ocular uh, shows acute blindness and retinopathy. And gastrointestinal shows intestinal uh, ischemia. Lung shows acute respiratory uh, distress and pulmonary edema. What are the syndromes that are associated with pheochromocytoma? Normally, pheochromocytoma is a uh, is a sporidiac, but uh, thirty to forty percent cases are familiar. These familiar tumors are usually associated with syndromes such as MEN two A syndrome, which is also known as uh, Sipple syndrome, where uh, parathyroid uh, mass may be present, medullary uh, thyroid cancer may be present in pheochromocytoma. MEN two B includes marfanoid phenotype, medullary uh, thyroid cancer, mucosal neuromas. And pheochromocytomas, whereas von Hippel, uh, von Hippel Lindwer disease includes hemangioblastomas of cerebellum, retina, and spinal cord, with cyst of pancreas, uh, pancreas and kidney, along with RCC mass. So, what are the triggering factors which increase the catecholamine secretion in pheochromocytoma? There are various triggering factors. Ph uh, physiological factors which increase in the catecholamine surge involves change in the position, increase in abdominal pressure during defecation, sneezing or voiding of urine, in, uh, over physical overactivity and emotional stress. Iatrogenic factors include while induction uh, during laryngoscopy uh, or some anesthetic drugs, opioids, uh, tricyclic antidepressants, MAO inhibitors, uh, cocaine, radi uh, radiographic contrast, Stress, anxiety, shivering, hypoxia, hypercarbia, and some invasive procedure also increases the catecholamine release. Are okay, what are food, the various diagnostic are tests? There any food, are there any food related uh, triggering factors of increase in catecholamine release? Yes, ma'am. The food which contain uh, a high amount of tyramine, such as red meat, red wine, and uh, cheese and cho uh, chocolates, increases uh, results into increase in the catecholamine release. Okay. Okay. What are the various diagnostic tests used in pheochromocytoma? A diagnosis of pheochromocytoma is made on the basis of history, uh, patient signs and symptoms, uh, biochemical testing and imaging. Uh, biochemical testing includes 24-hour uh, urine testing, where 24-hour urine metanephrine levels are tested. If it is more than 1.2 microgram per dl, it is considered to be a positive for pheochromocytoma. If it is 24-hour tw uh, urine catecholamines, more than two-fold elevation in, is considered positive and 24-hour urine VMAs if more than three-fold elevation is seen it's considered positive. Nowadays 24-hour urine VMA test is not preferred. Uh, the plasma-free metanephrine testing can also be done where if plasma-free metanephrine level more than 500 more than 400 picogram per ml is seen it is positive and less than 1 112 picogram is considered negative. Plasma-free uh, metanephrine's level more than 220 picogram is considered positive and less than 61 is considered negative. Plasma-free catecholamine more than 2000 is considered positive and less than 1000 is considered negative. So, which is the most sensitive and specific test that is recommended? My most sensitive test is plasma-free metanephrine, and most specific test is 24-hour urine catecholamine in which the uh, no metanephrine levels are considered specific. Okay. Um, Dr. Anil? So, what are the other indirect tests that can Do be done? Do you think the result is equal? 
the other uh, uh, test which can be done if the results are equivocal includes clonidine suppression test as it lowers the plasma catecholamine level in the patients without pheochromocytoma uh, and glucagon stimulation test uh, where uh, we give every intramuscular injection of glucagon 1 to 1.5 mg and if there is increase in catecholamine level more than 2000 within 1 to 3 minutes it's considered positive provocative testing using histamine and tyramine is not done anymore as it as it results into uh, patient landing into hypertensive crisis for familiar pheochromocytomas genetic testing should be done where uh, succinate dehydro enzyme mutation can be seen. What imaging modalities are done for localizing the tumor? Various imaging modalities can be used to localize the tumor. The most commonly used are CT scan, MRI, MIBG uh, scan, uh, progesterone emission scan and selective venous catheterization and catecholamine sampling. Any advantage of MRI over CT scan? Yes, sir. MRI uh, is... Uh, MRI is usually preferred over CT as it uh, as there is no need for contrast. Uh, it can also shows uh, it is intra uh, intra diaphragmatic imaging, so it also shows various extra adrenal uh, masses that uh, can be present, and uh, it is preferred in children. And uh, that's it. okay. So your uh, patient uh, has come for bilateral adrenalectomy. What are the different surgical approaches approaches that can be used for adrenalectomy? Uh, three approaches can be used for a patient with adrenalectomy. Open and uh, open approach can be taken. Laparoscopic procedure can be done, or a procedure using robotic surgery can also be done. So your patient will come to you for PAC. So what will be your objectives of pre anesthetic checkup in these patients? My pre-anesthetic checkup will include verification of history and examination findings, routine investigation, assessment and CVRT or uh, assessment and CVRT of hypertension and the medication medical therapy and evaluation for end organ damage. So what are the various investigations that will you advise to these patients in pre-anesthetic checkup? The investigations will include full blood count to rule out any anemia, thrombocytopenia or infection, serial hematocrit values which are indicative of intravascular volume, baseline renal functions, electrolyte counts, uh, uh, serum calcium levels, coagulation profile, chest x-ray to identify any cardiopulmonary abnormalities, RBS uh, to check the patient glycemic status, ECG for uh, ST uh, changes which might be seen during myocardial ischemia, ventricular hypertrophy or arrhythmia. 2D echo should be done to check the myocardial functions such as ejection fraction of the patient, uh, their ch uh, chamber site, it, any regional wall abnormalities is, or any ischemia. So your patient uh, will be posted for surgery. What will be your preoperative goals in surgical resection of adrenal mass and how will you prepare and optimize the patient preoperatively? My preoperative goals will include to decrease uh, the catecholamine surge and its effect on the organs during the uh, perioperative period and to initiate antihypertensive medications. Uh, the multidisciplinary approach should be used, which includes a cardiologist, endocrinologist, anesthetist, and a surgeon. Patient preparation key, uh, will include control in blood pressure and heart rate, it, uh, assessment and optimization of myocardial function, reverse of glucose and electrolyte disturbances, and increase in intravascular volume. So how will you control BP preoperatively? Various medication can be used to control the blood pressure such as alpha adrenergic blocker, beta blocker, calcium channel blockers, metyrosine. In the goal for alpha adrenergic blocker therapy will include control in blood pressure, increase in intravascular volume, um, reduces the chance, uh, re reducing the chances of hypertensive crisis during induction and tumor manipulation, allowing resensitization of adrenergic receptors and to reduce myocardial dysfunction in the perioperative period. The commonly used non-selective alpha blockers are uh, is phenoxybenzamine. It is a reversible non-selective alpha blocker. It has a long half-life and should be started 10 to 14 days before the surgery. Uh, the dose uh, started will be 10 mg twice a day, which can be maximized up to 60 to 250 mg per day. And it should be stopped at least 24 to 48 hours before the surgery. Monitoring of blood pressure should be done twice daily for orthostatic hypotension. The patient on who, uh, 
when we suggest patient to start uh, start phenoxybenzamine we ask them to increase their oral fluid intake and high salt diet Uh, the disadvantages which are commonly seen with alpha adrenergic blocker are dizziness headache postural hypotension nasal stuffiness operative uh, hypotension which is unlikely to respond to pressure agents so are there any condition uh, in which the prolonged therapy of phenoxybenzamine uh, phenoxybenzamine is required yes ma'am there are various conditions where uh, the dose of phenoxy uh, benzamine is needed to be given for more than 14 days such as cardiomyopathy recent mi uh, catecholamine induced vasculitis is uh, in these conditions patient uh, the dose should be increased along with refractory uh, refractory hypertension cases so what should be your target bp aimed while the patient is on phenoxybenzamine Uh, the target bp should be in supine position it should be targeted uh, approximately around 120 by 80 mm hg and in a standing position it should be more than equal to uh, 90 mm hg systolic blood pressure so what are the selective alpha blockers oh. used the commonly used selective alpha blockers include prazosine and doxazosin prazosine 2 to 5 mg twice 2 uh, to 3 times a day can be given doxazosin 2 to 8 mg up to 32 mg per day a new uh, drug has also come into the market ura, uh, uradipil uh, which stimulates serotonin 5ht1a receptor and it should be started 3 days prior to the surgery the advantage of using selective alpha 1 blocker is that it do not cause any tachycardia postural hypotension and there are less chances of post operative hypotension the disadvantage is as uh, as uh, prazosin is a short acting drug drug so frequent dosing is required uh, they may also cause retrograde ejaculation and, and prolonged uh, treatment of uh, selective alpha 1 blockade is given in uh, in malignant tumor or an inoperable tumor right what are the other groups of the drug other than alpha blockade which is used uh, to control the blood pressure beta blockers can also be used uh, beta blockers such as non selective beta blockers selective beta blockers and beta blockers with alpha blocking activity uh, can be given and propranolol a non selective blo uh, beta blockers 80 to 120 mg per day uh, it which can be maximized up to 480 mg per day this dose is usually given in epinephrine in uh, primarily epinephrine secreting a uh, pheochromocytoma selective blockers such as atenolol and metoprolol can also be used as beta blockers with some uh, alpha adrenergic blocking activity such as is lebetalol and uh, carbidilol can also be given the disadvantage of using beta sir we should ensure that alpha blocker is started before the beta blocker is given because as if we give beta blocker prior to the alpha blockers as because of the blockade of beta to vasodilatory activity there will be unopposed action of alpha adrenergic receptors which may result patient into which further increases the hypertension patient may land up into hypertensive crisis okay what is the role of calcium channel blocker in the controlling blood pressure calcium channel blockers are usually given in normotensive patient or in combination with the alpha blockers if blood pressure is not controlled uh, nicardipine can be started at 30 mg twice daily amlodipine 2.5 uh, to 10 mg per day and nifedipine 20 to 120 mg per day a recent and drug uh, nifedipine has also been used as in pheochromocytoma uh, it is a ultra short acting drug which starting dose is 1 to 2 mg per hour which can Can be doubled every ninety seconds and maximized up to thirty two uh, milligram per hour, uh, which can be uh, given up to a maximum of seventy two hours. And infusion of four to six milligram per hour can also be given. The advantages of using calcium channel blocker is as it do not cause any vasospasm, so it is safe to give in in patient with catecholamine induces my, uh, myocarditis. Is perioperative hypotension uh, responds to the pressure agents and it do not cause any postural hypotension. ACE inhibitors can also be used uh, to control the blood pressure. Metyrosine in uh, is also used. it is a competitive in a. inhibitor of tyrosine hydroxylase which is a rate limiting enzyme it decreases catecholamine secretions by 50 to 80% and it is a 5 day therapy uh, on day 1 uh, 250 mg uh, 
metyrosine is given and every 6 hourly on day 2 it is increased up to 500 mg on day 3 750 mg dose is given and, and a day before OT 100 mg dose is uh, given every 6 hourly it is usually given, given in malignant and non-resectable tumors uh, the disadvantages is most uh, common uh, disadvantage is hyper insomnolence but uh, it may also cause extra pyramidal side effect and if the dose is given to, of more than 200 2000 milligrams for a longer period of time, it also causes crystal urea. What are the causes of tachycardia and arrhythmia and how to control them? Tachycardia, tachycardia is usually because of adrenaline secreting tumors or secondary to alpha blockers. So we have to make sure that beta blockers is started after alpha uh, blockage is achieved. A commonly used uh, commonly used drug is selective uh, beta 1 antagonists such as atenolol and metoprolol. So what is the target heart rate? A target heart rate in supine position is uh, 60 to uh, 70 and when in standing position it should be 70 to 80. And why it is important to assess and optimize the myocardial function in these patients? Uh, catecholamine induced cardiomyopathy is uh, may also be present in many patients and uh, because of reduction myocardial pump function there is a uh, reduction in viable myofibrils and uh, down regulation of beta receptors this causes global reduction myocardial pump function catecholamine also increase permeability of sarcolemal membrane which leads into uh, entry of excess calcium um, to uh, toxicity from oxidized products of catecholamines and damage from free radicals High catecholamine acts on alpha adrenergic receptor and causes uh, coronary vasoconstriction, which uh, may also cause ischemia as there is decrease in the blood flow. All these uh, may, uh, causes left ventricular dysfunction. And uh, so, uh, a preoperative ECG and echo should be done to assess the cardiac status. And what are the causes of hyperglycemia? <laughs> Patient. The uh, common cause for hyperglycemia, uh, hyperglycemia is commonly seen in pheochromocytoma. It is because of increase in uh, glyconeolysis, because of impaired insulin release from beta cells, else and uh, lipo in lipolysis, and increase in glucagon release with resistance uh, with peripheral insulin resistance. So insulin should be given to control the hyperglycemic status, and uh, disturbances in electrolyte should also be checked because there might be any catecholamine induced renal impairment or hyperkalemia may be seen in men 2 a syndrome. So how will you optimize the intravascular volume? To optimize the intravascular volume, patient should be asked to increase his oral intake by 2 to 3 liters per day and uh, his uh, salt intake by uh, more than 5 grams. Uh, patient should be advised this on the uh, third or th or fourth, on second or third day of the beta, of alpha blockade therapy. Serial hematocrit count should be done to check the intravascular volume status. There is a fall, a fall of 5 to 10% seen in normal volumic patients. So, Arzu, how will you assess that your patient is optimized uh, and he uh, they are ready for the surgery? There is a Rosen criteria which should be for uh, which uh, which is checked out before taking the patient into the surgery. The blood pressure re reading should be consistently less than one sixty by ninety mmHg. Presence of orthostatic hypotension should not be less than eighty to forty five mmHg. ECG should be free of ST uh, changes and no no more than one premature ventricular contraction every five minutes should be seen. So your patient is posted for uh, adrenalectomy. Uh, would you like to give some preoperative or uh, preoperative orders uh, to the patient? Yes, ma'am. Patient. Uh should be asked to stop phenoxybenzamine 24 to 48 hours before the surgery. Selective alpha blocker should be given a night prior to the surgery. Beta blocker should also be given as scheduled. Patient should be asked, uh, asked to keep NBM for solid food, uh, foods 8 to 6 hours prior to the surgery and for liquid, uh, clear liquids 2 hours prior to the surgery. A written informed consent should be taken. Uh, patient, uh, there, 
benzodiazepine can also be given to relieve the patient anxiety a night before the surgery. Uh, IV fluid should be started at the rate of 80 to 100 ml per hour, 24 hour before the surgery. And staff should be asked to do minimum manipulation while shifting the patient. And what would be your anesthetic goals during the surgery? Anesthetic goals will include uh, to avoid any drugs or maneuver which uh, causes catecholamine surge, to correct any hypovolumia and maintain normal volumia, to provide anesthesia and maintain stable hemodynamics by short-acting uh, drugs during induction and intubation, surgical incision, uh, nemoperitoneum during laparoscopic approach, abdominal exploration and tumor manipulation, and during ligation of venous drainage of tumor. Post-operative hemodynamic and pain management will also be done. And so your patient uh, is shifted to OT uh, on the day of surgery. So are there any important consideration you will keep in mind while preparing your OT and before yes. shifting the patient to OT? Yes, ma'am. My OT preparation will include optimal room uh, maintaining optimal room temperature, routine OT preparation such as check, uh, checking the anesthesia machine laryngoscope bla uh, blade and uh, preparing a airway cart, uh, 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 keeping my induction agents ready, infusion of vasopressors such as non-adrenal and vasopressin and, and vasodilators, NTG and sodium nitroprusside uh, should be kept ready. Uh, uh, CVP, IVP in, uh, transducer system should be ready fluid warmer, rapid fluid infusion device, hand inflated pressure bags, eggs and rapid volume expanders such as colloids and blood pressure should uh, and blood product should be checked. Uh, what would be your anesthetic technique of choice and uh, if you describe the anesthetic consideration in these patients? The Anesthetic technique, uh, technique uh, which is preferred is general anesthesia with or without any epidural anesthesia. Factors which causes increase in catecholamine surge such as stress, anxiety, pain, hypoxia and hypercarbia should be avoided. Uh, endotracheal intubation should be done only when a satisfactory depth of anesthesia is achieved. If the uh, drugs such uh, which stimulate sympathetic nervous system causes histamine release, causes catecholamine uh, surge or may produce hypertensive responses should be avoided. Drugs which are safe to use uh, includes pro uh, propofol, etomidate, fentanyl, elvacuronium, drocuronium and sevoflurane. And a close check on the random blood uh, sugar should be kept, especially after the tumor is ligated. And uh, normothermia should be maintained by using a post-air warming device. So which uh, drugs should be avoided during surgery? Drugs which should be commonly avoided during pheochromocytoma surgery includes dopamine blocking drugs such as metoclopramide, uh, uh, droperidol and heroperidol. Uh, these drugs, uh, droperidol and heroperidol can be given into small amounts uh, whereas high doses cause uh, inhibits dopaminergic suppression of non-epinephrine release. Glucagon should be avoided as it, call, as it causes release of catecholamine from the tumor. Uh, sympathomyometric uh, drugs such as ketamine, cocaine, ephedrine should be avoided. Histamine releasing medications such as morphine and etrocurium should be avoided, but if it is given in slowly, uh, it can be used. Helothin sensitizes the myocardium to catecholamine, which uh, may la uh, land the patient into arrhythmias. How will you monitor these patients intraoperatively? The uh, commonly used intraoperative modalities such as ECG, pulse oximeter, ETCO2, temperature uh, probe is used uh, along with invasive blood uh, pressure monitoring and, uh, and CVP monitoring. Urinary catheterization should be done and, and bispectral index uh, monitoring can also be done along with neuromuscular monitoring. And, and if, uh, if patient has some cardiac issues or ca uh, cardiomyopathy, uh, then uh, pulmonary artery catheter or T, uh, TE monitoring can also be done. Okay, Arju, what are the common causes of hypertension during surgery? Common causes of hypertension during uh, uh, intraoperative period includes change in the position of the patient during intubation, surgical incision, if there is inadequate depth of anesthesia while insufflating the CO2 during the uh, laparoscopic procedure and while manipulation of tumor. Okay, so what drugs uh, are used to control the blood pressure during surgery? 
commonly uh, used drugs are uh, first uh, increase in the depth of anesthesia should be given to rule out a, uh, a, uh, a plane of anesthesia then ntg infusion can be started at 0.5 to 5 m micro mcg per kg per minute esmolol can be used at bolus of 10 to 50 mg followed by infusion uh, infusion of starting from 25 to 250 uh, microgram per kg per uh, minute. Lobetalol 5 to 20 mg bolus dose can be given which can be maximized up to 300 milligram per day. Infusion of 1, uh, 1 to 2 mg per minute can also be started. Nicardipine 5 milligram per hour can be started which is increased is by 2.5 milligram every 15 minutes and maximized up to 50 milligram per hour. Sodium nitroprusside infusion can be started at 0.5 to 5 mcg per kg per minute. Pentolamine can also be used. 1 mg bolus is given which is followed by 5 mg bolus and an infusion on 0.5 to 1 microgram per minute can be started. Magnesium sulfate can be given in 2 to 4 gram over 20 minutes followed by an infusion of 1 to 2 gram per hour. So, what are the causes of intraoperative hypertension? After venous ligation? Intraoperative hypertension uh, may be because of a sudden uh, decrease in catecholamine in levels, hypovolemia due to fluid and blood loss, residual blockage from phenoxybenzamine, uh, contralateral adrenal suppression, and because of increase in the depth of anesthesia. Okay. Apart from the hypertension or hypotension, what are the other intraoperative complications occurs in the fucromal cytoma surgery? Sir, other uh, complications also include intraoperative hypoglycemia uh, and intraoperative arrhythmias. As for uh, hypoglycemia, dextrose containing solution can be given, which are usually preferred. Uh, <laughs> which are usually given after the ligation of the tumor. So a close RBS, uh, so, uh, so a close glucose monitoring should be gun, done. Intraoperative, for intraoperative arrhythmias, commonly used drugs are lidocaine, 50 to 100 mg IV. Uh, beta blockers, uh, short acting beta blockers such as esmolol can also be used. Amiodaron uh, can also be given for ventricular or supraventricular tachycardias. So your patient, uh, uh, have you have managed successfully? So uh, how will you manage these uh, oh, patients post-operatively? Ma'am, after the surgery is done and patient is extubated, he is cared for in the uh, intensive care unit. The most common uh, side effect for next 48 hours include hyperinsomolence, and uh, which may be because of uh, sudden decrease in catecholamine levels or because of hypoglycemia. Hypotension uh, may also be present, uh, which should be maintained using sustainable fluid and vasopressor uh, treatment. Hypoglycemia uh, uh, may be present because of excessive insulin release and inadequate glycogenolysis uh, so a close rbs monitoring should be done hyper uh, and there may be hypertension because of uh, still a high amount of catecholamines present in the blood uh, because of their slow release from the nerve terminals uh, so there may be some residual tumor left and there might be fluid overload which may result into hypertension and complications such as acute renal failure may also be seen if there is a prolonged hypertension or an injury to renal blood vessel uh, vessel is caused during the surgery and if it is a case of bilateral adrenalectomy steroid therapy should be given how will you manage pain in these patients postoperatively um, if we have already inserted an epidural then a, a low dose of local anesthetic agent with uh, the uh, where the adjuvant should be used uh, is, uh, for uh, then we can also give local infiltration of 0.25% bupivacaine and uh, NSAIDs can also be used uh, as a patient control anesthesia with uh, the uh, with fentanyl can also be given morphine can be used in post operative period and, and uh, blocks uh, such as a uh, tap block uh, ql block esp block and rs block can also be used so uh, you have told that uh, epidural can be given. So is it safe to give epidural because this will cause also sympatholysis? And how will you uh, manage these epidurals? 
ma'am if patient has a hypotension uh, then uh, we will avoid giving the epidural uh, dose with local anesthetic agent then only opioid will be given and uh, but if his blood pressure is within normal limit then we can uh, give low dose uh, uh, low dose local anesthetic agent with other opioids and morphine uh, can also be given in yeah better it is better to give after uh, the surgery or it, for post operative uh, analgesia you can give these epidurals so uh, what are the concern now you have this is for this patient was posted for open uh, bilateral laterectomy i suppose so uh, are there any concerns additional concerns if uh, these patients are posted for laparoscopic adrenalectomy Yes, ma'am. Uh, nowadays, usually laparoscopic procedures are preferred as it is less invasive and fast recovery is seen. In, uh, during laparoscopic procedure, there might be uh, increase in catecholamine because of creation of pneumoperitoneum. And these elevated catecholamine uh, raises uh, cardiac output uh, and increases the blood pressure when uh, CO2 insufflation is done because of heightened uh, sympathetic activity uh, because of hypercarbia. So suppose uh, the patient uh, is pregnant woman and uh, she is a diagnosed case of a pheochromocytoma, and uh, she has come for a uh, 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 in emergency or a delivery, or it is, she is posted for elective uh, caesarean section. So, what are the consideration in these patients, pregnant females with pheochromocytoma? Of, uh, the modality rate is very high in pregnancy. Uh, patient, uh, it causes paroxysmal supine hypertension syndrome. Um, if it is diagnosed early, then tumor resection should be considered before uh, second trimester with a risk of abortion. Medical therapy in medical therapy, we can give phenoxybenzamine as it is safe, uh, and elective cesarean should be preferred in pregnancy. Uh, and uh, if patient uh, should go for uh, resection of tumor few weeks following the cesarean section uh, uh how uh, did you manage the patient that you have given the history that uh, he, he was just operated 15 days back how did you manage the uh, this patient so these were all the yeah. general considerations and what uh, precautions should to be taken in pheochromocytoma but how did you manage the patient uh, Ma'am, uh, our my patient was on uh, prazosin, uh, so the uh, last dose was given a night before the OT. Uh, uh, the IV fluids were started at the rate of 100 ml L, uh, per hour, 24 hours prior to the procedure. Our uh, patient was asked to uh, not take any solid diet uh, eight six hours before the OT, and clear fluid was stopped two hours prior to the procedure. Uh, for anxiety, uh, medications were given a night before the uh, procedure uh, after uh, the OT preparation was uh, done patient was uh, has taken into the OT uh, his uh, and uh, epidural was uh, is inserted after midazolam and fentanyl was given to reduce the anxiety after the securing of epidural a uh, radial line was taken under the local anesthetic agent and uh, after which we started induction and uh, with a uh, on Ondensetron, lidocaine, in, uh, lidocaine, fentanyl, and propofol. After uh, etracurium was used uh, used to uh, used to induce the patient, and after uh, adequate depth of anesthesia was achieved, laryngoscopy uh, was done and the airway was secured. And after after which CVP line was secured and the surgeon was asked to start the surgery. Okay. So uh, you managed the case properly. Yes, ma'am. During intraop, there was a sudden hypertension scene, which was uh, managed using NTG. And after the ligation of tumor, sudden hypertension was also noted, but was managed using noradrenaline. Okay. So will you please summarize uh, the finding uh, management part of your chromocytoma? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
all in all uh, successful uh, peri operative management is very important a multi disciplinary approach including endocrinologist surgeon and uh, cardiologist and anesthetist should be done there should be a proper understanding of path uh, pathophysiology of clinical uh, features adequate pre operative optimization should be done and and meticulous intra operative and post operative hemodynamic should be managed okay thank you dr azu uh over to coordinators thank you ma'am uh thank you ma'am uh, dr alka ma'am and uh, dr anil and dr arzu uh, there are few questions in the chat box can we discuss them ma'am yeah sure ma'am the first question is asked by dr uh, uh, rajiv jindal Uh, why alpha blockage should be done before uh, beta blockage, which has already been discussed by Dr. Arzu. Dr. Arzu, you can tell again why alpha blockage has to be done before beta blockage. Ma'am, if we start beta blockage uh, prior to alpha blocker because of blocking of beta two vasodilatory response, there is unopposed action of alpha adrenergic receptor, alpha adrenergic receptors, thus uh, increasing in in the uh, blood pressure further, and patient may land up into hypertensive crisis. Uh, another question has been asked by Dr. Lalit Kumar: Which drug to prefer to control intraoperative uh, um, blood pressure? uh as you can answer uh, ma'am if there is increase in the blood pressure intraoperatively ntg was uh, is usually preferred in our institute but uh, other drugs such as beta blockers calcium channel uh, uh, blockers or sodium nitroprusside can also be used if there is a sudden hype hy hypotension uh, during the intraoperative no, we are talking about to control the bp intraoperatively i suppose so basically uh, sir uh, ntg is usually preferred and the uh, short acting ismolol can also be used uh, to control intraoperative hypertension because nitroprusside is not used nowadays so but uh, it uh, ismolol and ntg are preferred uh, drugs to control the hypertension intraoperatively another question is asked uh, which is the muscle relaxant of choice so muscle relaxant usually uh, it is said that uh, the uh, that atracurium as it causes release of histamine it should be avoided but uh, studies have been done and uh, it has been shown that if they are given given slowly and in uh, optimal doses it does not cause uh, histamine release and the atracurium or cetracurium can also be used vicuronium uh, should be avoided if there is uh, an renal insufficiency so better to give atracurium and cetracurium and nowadays rocuronium can also be used for the cases so next question the same dr muthu kumar has asked two questions uh, how good is dexmedetomidine for controlling preoperative and intraoperative blood pressure and second question is asked that can clonidine be given as pre medication and the doses and indication so these clonidine and dexmedetomidine are usually alpha 2 agonist very uh, the there are very limited studies in the in using dexmedetomidine or clonidine uh, during uh, in the cases of uh, pheochromocytoma but it has been uh, published in few literature that dexmedetomidine can be used to control intraoperative and it yes. should be started preoperatively also if the patient has raised bp uh, it should be used in, in the doses of 1 mac per kg followed by 0.5 max per kg per hour infusion can be started this has definitely uh, shown to decrease the norepinephrine uh, surge and uh, also the decrease in bp intraoperatively but cautious should be used because uh, Uh, it, and it should be used before the ligation and uh, removal uh, tumor removal so a uh, very limited studies have been used for this yes i also want to add that in literature uh, it has been mentioned clearly that dexmedetomidine can also be used but it can be used only to control the laryngoscopy and the intubation response it should not be used to control the hypertensive crisis which occurs during yeah, the tumor manipulation Yeah, it will not increase profound hypotension in addition to the alpha blocked beta blocked and other drugs anesthetic drugs because depth of anesthesia is also being maintained so with those only drugs you have to try to control yeah care should be taken if the patient are already on alpha blocked uh, therapy so care definitely mm -hmm. there should be there are chances of hypotension intraoperatively 
The next question is by Dr. Shriya. Uh, why not nitroprusside uh, not used now? Uh, Arzu can answer this question. Um, we can use sodium nitroprusside, but uh, it has a high in, uh, intensity of reacting to, uh, towards the light as it precipitates very fast. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we cannot keep an infusion prepared for a longer period. So that's why we avoid using sodium nitroprusside. And secondly, the, there are chances if they are given in higher doses, they can cause thiocyanate uh, uh, poisoning, okay. toxicity and with methemoglobinemia. And uh, the patient may develop tachyphylaxis very uh, uh, on regular basis. That, that's why and better drugs have been introduced in the market for control of BP intraoperatively. So they should be used instead of nitroprusside. Ma'am, I would uh, like to slightly differ here uh, because uh, uh, I would like to use nitroprusside for some time uh, if nitroprusside is available. Usually sodium nitroprusside, if you ask the patient to bring it, it is not generally available. But if it is available, you can use it during the hypertensive crisis. Uh, the uh, best way to uh, avoid the degradation of the sodium nitroprusside is that you can cover starting from the bottle and the IV set with black color paper. So you have to pre-operatively prepare the nitroprusside uh, solution and keep it in a dark uh, place. So you can use, I have used it personally and okay. uh, so I connect the nitroprusside, I make it, I don't make it in a infusion. I make it in the bottle and uh, hang it on the IV set and cover it with black paper and attach a dial flow because at the time of hypertensive mm -hmm. crisis, the systolic blood pressure may rise up to 300, 400. So you have to adjust the flow and uh, uh, to control the blood pressure intraoperatively. Okay. So uh, the Dr. Is Dalit, the easily available in sentiment. Yes, not sir. easily available in it is not easily available in hospital yes it is not easily available yes you are correct that is why we have to uh, keep other drugs ready uh, next question uh, dr lalit has said that in his opinion nitroprusside is better than uh, ntg i think both have, have to be uh, simultaneously prepared you have to prepare for the hypertensive crisis as well as for the after the ligation of the adrenal vein you have to prepare for the hypotensive crisis which occurs so next next question is is it necessary to give steroids in unilateral adrenalectomy hello hello ma'am in unilateral adrenalectomy it is not a uh, it should. It is not usual. Uh, always suggested to use steroids, whereas in bilateral steroids should be uh, given starting from the induction. Hundred mg hydro uh, hydrocortisone should be given at the time of the induction, and then it should be given every eight hourly for next twenty four hours, and should be weaned off uh, off in next three days. And a uh, oral dose of uh, twenty five mg hydrocortisone or a prednisolone oral dose can be started. Thank you. Uh, next question is by Dr. Mohan Pathak. Uh, is laparoscopic surgery better than open technique? Ma'am, Alka, ma'am. Uh, yes, definitely. Laparoscopic surgery is better than open because uh, of uh, reduced pain and uh, better recovery and uh, uh, during the after the surgery and less pain is there and definitely hospital stay is uh, definitely less. But it is only indicated if uh, the tumor is not metastatized or unilateral uh, in origin and uh, tumors that are less than 8 centimeters uh, in size. Mm -hmm. size. Uh, otherwise, if they are bilateral associated with malignant, uh, uh, malignancy or metastasis is that uh, the surgeons recommend whoever are uh, operating the tumor. Yes, ma'am. I would just to re-emphasize that laparoscopic surgeries is recommended for tumors less than uh, 6 to 8 centimeter or less than 100 grams. And the endocrine yeah. society has given the guidelines that yes. if the tumor size is greater than 6 to 8 centimeter, then it is better to proceed with the open technique because otherwise during tumor handling, too much of hypertensive crisis will occur. The next question is by Sunita Datta. Can we use succinyl uh, choline for intubation? 
it is better to avoid succamethonium for intubation because uh, succamethonium, as we all know, and that will cause fasciculation and increases the intra-abdominal pressure. That will definitely uh, sometimes release the catecholamine uh, or increase the catecholamine surge uh, by directly uh, pressing uh, because of intra increase in intraabdominal pressure that may cause hypertensive crisis during laryngoscopy. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a surge of questions. Now uh, suddenly there are uh, no questions um, more. Wants to ask questions? They are welcome. Uh, ma'am, could uh, ma'am Madhuri wants to uh, add? Good evening, good evening, ma'am. Uh, very beautiful presentation. Almost every aspect of pheochromocytoma has been covered. Uh, this, um, uh, Doctor Arzu, uh, regarding yes, the management of hypotension, intraoperative hypotension. So, which drugs yeah. did you mention? Like, yes, ma'am, for intraoperative hypertension. Hypertensive uh, crisis. Uh, huh? Yes, ma'am. For intraoperative hypot uh, hypotension crisis, uh, mm -hmm. fluid boluses uh, should be given and before pre ligation. And uh, uh, depth of anesthesia should be decreased. Is and phenyl ephedrine can be given forty to uh, one sixty uh, mcg bolus followed by infusion of ten to two hundred mcg per minute. Ephedrine can also be used five to twenty five mg bolus. Uh, so non adrenaline infusion can be started two to twenty mcg per minute. And vasopressin can also be uh, given at point and one yes. to point zero three units per minute. Yes. So here I would just like to add. That um, IV methylene blue has also been used to treat refractory hypotension in cases of uh, during the resection of pheochromocytoma. Yeah, it's definitely. Methylene blue. Yes, and mixture of uh, drugs and uh, uh, finally IV methylene blue can be used, especially if, uh, if it's refractory. Yeah. And uh, there are not many reports on that, but there is literature. Yes. And uh, this methylene blue, how it acts is it. Um, inhibits the enzyme nitric oxide synthase and because of that the nitric oxide induced uh, vasodilatation of the smooth muscles will be inhibited so the vasodilatation will come down and the hypotension will come down that is the logic okay yes and um, arzu uh, there are some uh, some uh, uh, predisposing uh, factors which they have found like uh, if present the, in these patients, the uh, hemodynamic crisis, you know, the, uh, the number of hemodynamic emergencies will be more. So, can you tell which are those uh, situation, uh, which are those factors like predisposing factors for the occurrence of uh, the hemodynamic emergencies, either hypertension or hypotension, anything, either of the two. Okay, ma'am. Uh, the patient. Uh... Are you asking the intra-op emergencies? Huh? No, no, pre-op, pre-op. Any pre-op any pre pre predisposing factors, the patient may land up into hemodynamic instability uh, during and after exactly. the surgery. Yes, yes. Uh, yes ma'am. Uh, patient usually has an increase uh, in the uh, release of catecholam uh, means during uh, activities uh, such as when he is defecating or during uh, doing any mm -hmm. physical That you cannot exertion. make out. We cannot Actually, make out. Actually, uh, the patients who have a uh, uh, metanephrine release before the surgery and uh, the patient who are uh, having, uh, uh, I suppose I am getting, I am not getting it, yeah. predisposing factors. Yes, or yes. The patient uh, patient who are already in phenoxybenzamine and they have uh, uh, the predisposition of orthostatic hypotension, they are more prone for... Uh, yes. The, yeah. yes, yes, madam. Yes, especially yes. if it is a very prolonged alpha blockade. Because yeah. usually they start 14 to 15 days before, as she has already said. So if it's a very prolonged alpha blockade pre-op or if it's a very weak patient with a body mass index less than 24, and uh, as uh, with also the, the tumor size is, is this tumor size is more than four to six centimeters exactly. they are also predisposed exactly yeah, yeah. exactly and the prolonged duration of surgery and anesthesia yes yes ma'am we have few other questions uh ma'am uh, madhuri ma'am uh, Dr. Swati, Dr. Swati, yes, Dr. lalit sir has raised and let him ask the question first okay sir 
सर अनम्यूट कर लो पहले यस सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर नाइसली कवर्ड द टॉपिक आई वॉन्ट टू एड ऑन माई एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ फोर केसेज द सोडियम नाइट्रोक्साइड इज बेटर ओवर द नाइट्रोक्लिसिन अवेलेबिलिटी इज नो प्रॉब्लम वी कैन एबल टू कंट्रोल द ब्लड प्रेशर इंटर ऑपरेटली एज सुन एज वी वॉन्ट टू स्टॉप इट वी कैन एबल टू स्टॉप एंड ब्लड प्रेशर कैन एबल टू रिकवर अर्ली देन द नाइट्रोक्लिसिन One thing, second thing, nitroglycerin cause tachycardia. So we can able to make better intraoperative control than the nitroglycerin. Maybe experience differ. It's my just add on. Yes, sir. Definitely, we have not. I have not used nitroprusside uh, in yeah. my. Uh, and uh, rebound, and rebound even it is that there is a chances uh, inavailability of uh, nitroprusside in my institutes. So usually we prefer what are the drugs uh, available in. Yeah, definitely, institutes. definitely. But sir, also rebound hypertension is more with the nitroglycerin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hypertension is very high with. So if sudden hypertension is there, we can able to get recover early. Yes, Swati, yeah, please carry on. so the next question is uh, 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 just uh, it uh, ma'am madhuri had talked about uh, methylene blue dr jashan preet singh has asked about ma'am the dose of methylene blue in pheochromocytoma refractory hypotension i i don't know the dose of methylene blue actually yeah i will tell you it's 1 to 2 mg per kg iv okay ma'am the next question thank you ma'am next uh, question has been asked is can we use prosil element for the surgery uh, ye are why airway is coming here in between the prosil or the endotracheal tube so we are more concerned with the secured airway and the a smooth surgical procedure airway has nothing to do with these type of procedures because sometimes it's a long surgery it's better to have a very secure airway where the patient movement should not disturb the you know the lms or supraglottic devices it's better to go for the uh, endotracheal intubation and go ahead with the surgery only in the very difficult rare cases where i think uh, pheochromocytoma with a difficult airway you encounter where you really have to awake the algorithm for difficult airway there you can think of these things otherwise i think better to go in a very safe manner established manner yes sir definitely uh next question has been asked that any difference to anesthetize in the management of pediatrics how common uh, dr mohan has asked how common in pediatric population and management a uh, study says that uh, it is 10% of a patient pediatric patient may manifest uh, uh, as a pheochromocytoma uh the difference i think depends upon the symptomatology the presentation the morbidity it has caused in the pediatric patient whether they are ready for the surgery or the clinical mm -hmm. symptomatology how they are presenting to the surgical opd or the endocrine opd that also depends whether they really require surgery or they can the medical management cases because every few chromocytoma is not going to be resected there are many medical management strategies available in pediatric patients if you go through the books of endocrinology you will see the lot of treatment is there and it's not if madam has asked for 10% patients are pediatric i think among those 10% not more than 10% may be requiring surgery also <clears throat> the the next question is uh, uh, in general should we avoid succinylcholine in any laparoscopic surgery if the patient is hypertensive <laughs> Okay. a long due question always ask in every seminar actually if we all uh, this is uh, no it is not necessary to uh, uh, not give to not to give succamethonim in each and every laparoscopic surgery this uh, the case of pheochromocytoma is uh, the tumor the release of catecholamines from the tumor that will uh, be because of raised intracranial pressure uh, intraabdominal pressure by succamethonium you can use in but it is better to uh, uh, reduce the pressure response by giving various drugs that are used while intubation if you are using succamethonium but what i think ma'am when the patient is adequately prepared for a pheochromocytoma resection 
I don't think so. The muscle twitching, the muscle fasciculation is going to disturb the organic structure of the tumor because even if the intra-abdominal pressure rises, uh, I think rather than having a obese patient or because these patients are usually lean and thin, if you go for the resection or average build, you can say. So abdominal pressure as such with a sectional colon is, I think, a minimal amount in because already the patients are well prepared, the structure is well preserved, the tumor is well preserved, and manipulations, even if with the intra abdominal pressures, are not that much. And coming to that part of the robotic surgery or laparoscopy surgery or even the gentle open surgery, the only one confounding factor in the textbooks of anesthesiology is that the robot the endoscope, the resector may not be that much experience with the hands of a surgeon as a very good surgeon whose fingers are much, much more meticulous in the very finite re resection of this tumor. I think even in India, we may uh, go by the rule of 10, 10% 10 of the endocrine surgeon may be there who can really pull out this pheochromocytoma with a very meticulous dissection. I think much, much better way than the robotic or endoscope. Uh, nothing taking away from the uh, endoscopy and advanced surgical skills, but those also require a learning curve how to handle the tumors with the endoscope or with the laparoscope or with the robotic fingers. I think that also depends upon the learning curve, how they've come over the ages mm -hmm. to handle these things. So these are the yeah. transitional phases. Transitional phases over the next decade, the pictures will be very, very clear about the very good role of the advanced surgical techniques and skills. Agreed, sir. Uh, next question is asked by Dr. Muthu Kumar. How do you manage intraoperative cardiomyopathy? How to diagnose? Can we use uh, transesophageal echocardiography intraoperatively? Yeah, Dr. Anil, you can answer this. Intraoperative cardiomyopathy? The question, uh, Dr. Swati, can you repeat the question, please? Sir, how to manage intraoperative cardiomyopathy? What is the meaning of intraoperative cardiomyopathy? You have to diagnose it before diagnose. you are. That Maybe is not the uh, doctor Mithu, doctor Mithu wants to ask if the patient has pheochromocytoma and because of the chronic hypertensive uh, case, the patient has cardiomyopathy. Uh, see, that's the a preoperative, not intraoperative. It's a preoperative. Okay. It's already. How do you diagnose it? So diagnosis is, I think it should be made pre-operative only yeah, that the patient yeah, is having cardiomyopathy. Already, yeah, optimization should be done because we have uh, already investigated the patient pre-operatively and on ECO, uh, if there are uh, chances of a uh, diagnosed uh, as a cardiomyopathy, we have to optimize the myocardial uh, dysfunction uh, before uh, taking the patient for surgery. And can we use and trans esophageal echocardiography intraoperatively? Yeah, you yes, can. For, we can use transesophageal uh, esophageal echocardiography uh, for uh, assessing the functional uh, status of uh, the ventricle, and these is usually indicated in severe uh, cardiomyopathies, not in routine cases. But um, if it's available, I think it's a very good uh, you know device because uh, yeah. the certain uh, uh, spurts of the catecholamines, certain deficiency of catecholamines will at least make the wall of the myocardium go flutter or go contract. I think it's very easy to diagnose if the experienced hands are there in using the transesophageal. There is no harm. At least you're not going to put a pressure on the uh, tumor. It's a, if you are very well versed with the technique, it's always going to be helpful for managing the cardiac, uh, you know, the functions during the perioperative period. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, in the in the presentation, I'm sorry, but uh, I thought I could not see uh, you, you Mane, mention of magnesium. Do you think magnesium is important for uh, pheochromocytoma? Yeah, it was mentioned yes, in the management of intraoperative hypertension. She has okay. given... Uh, okay, it has been mentioned now because magnesium has a lot of uh, role, especially for pheochromocytoma. And in the fact that it is, uh, it decreases catecholamine release, it is a highly effective alpha uh, adrenergic, uh, adrenergic antagonist, especially in the presence of large uh, uh, these catecholamine presence in the blood. So uh, these days, magnesium is quite frequently being used. The other yeah. thing is that these pheochromosomatoma patients are uh, very volume depleted. Mm -hmm. So many times because of the high catecholamine levels, uh, how can we assess the volume status before? Because if the patient is dehydrated, the hemodynamic fluctuations will be quite high. 
so uh, is there uh, is there any method or how do you assess for these uh, human like uh, intravascular status in the our setup what United we States? do is we go in for an ivc assessment we do go in for an ivc assessment and uh, you know we have to give fluids more often than not we have to give fluids before we start a case yes. so is that the same uh, in, in your setup also yes we are usually so, starting 24 hours prior to the surgery iv fluids uh, are started uh, a day before the surgery yeah i think it's a practice it is not going to die down dr nishan because see just like it's like just riding a you know tired horse or flogging a horse if the volume depletion is there where the catechol means hurt and the vessels are empty of fluid and blood suddenly you get a spurt of catecholamine that is going to be a very very notorious for the myocardium as well as for the sympathetic parasympathetic interactivity also so it's always better to have a good volume status in these patients before we undertake them for a surgery i think these old practices whatever people have experienced over the last four or five decades who have established the traditional methods and with the advent of modern medicines controlling the alpha and beta receptors as well as other mm -hmm. modalities of the pharmacological management these have really, you know, made the surgery very safe. And if, I, I will ask a very personal question. Dr. Arzu, how many cases you have done in your PG career as a scene rather, not done, seen in your career for a section of your chromocytoma? Sir, I have assisted in three three cases. Three cases. So I think that's a good, uh, Ronishan, that's mm -hmm. a very good learning phase because three cases when the PG students go uh, see those cases, they go back to their rooms, they study the books, they go to everyone, internet also, they know about the, the different, different complications and the things get imprinted on their mind. I think this is the best way to go ahead with these type of cases. Arju, I think you must have got enriched by the experience for those these cases. You can tell your experience also to other PG students here. Tell at least two, three lines about that. Okay, so is the first case which uh, I, I have usually assisted in open uh, procedure only, uh, which was done. So first two cases were unilateral adrenalectomy and the third one is which I just presented bilateral adrenalectomy. In uh, first one patient was a PTCA patient. So uh, in that patient I assisted in the first year. So uh, there was a lot of cardiac monitoring we did uh, uh, during intraop, and the fluid was also given with, uh, with like, very restricted fluid was given because the patient EF was quite low, uh, but uh, patient was uh, extubated on the table, sir. Uh, second case was uh, as a very uh, young patient around, uh, he was of 30 years. Uh, so there no intraop complication we saw. It was a very smooth case. And third case I just presented, there was a sudden decrease and increase in this patient. What is your message to the first year and second year PGs? Tell me that. That's very important in this class. As a PG student, third year PG student, message to the first and second year. Even if you don't understand what is going on, you should still be there. At the end of the procedure, you will understand what is happening. And go and read about it. Keep asking your teachers, keep asking your seniors on the table, off the table. Don't hesitate to ask anything in these type of cases. Arju, yeah, you are lucky that you came across three cases. Yeah. Maybe a memory for a long life. Maybe you yeah. are not able to see. She will definitely come to know in later part in the life when she will be doing a, yes. a job somewhere. Dr. Swati. Yes. Sir, uh, now uh, the messages are of that good presentation. The chat box is now getting flooded with um the uh, applause for uh, the team dr alka dr anil and dr arzu good presentation and discussion going thank on you. yes thank you so much that's okay that's uh, that was already you know anticipated that was no problem at all so uh, just see if anybody wants to give their expert comments or their suggestions or any other experience they can unmute themselves and they can dr uh, Patak is uh, mohan Patak wants yeah to... yeah please mohan Patak sir is very regular in the classes Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Please uh, carry uh, on. This is the, not regarding it. Uh, Pyochromocytoma. Uh, we used to give methyl, uh, methylene blue to identify in the cases of parathyroidectomy. When you give uh, 30 ml of the methylene blue intravenously, 
So uh, after dissection, we can see the parathyroid glands are uh, stained with the blue in. So it is better to use uh, uh, for identification of the parathyroid glands during the dissection. And there was no hypotension or such thing. Maybe. Okay. This is not regarding with the uh, today's topic. But uh, we used uh, methylene blue to uh, identify the parathyroid glands many times. Yeah, methylene blue is a drug which was also very much going to be used and during COVID time somehow yes. it escaped the yeah. uh, mind of researchers because it was such a horrible disease that came suddenly and methylene blue was because we were using it for so many poisoning cases also. But somehow yes, it has yes. got its own uses. Yeah. So next uh, hand is raised by Dr. Halley. Yeah, Halley. She is going to present the next class. Where is she? Yeah, Ali, unmute yourself. Oh, uh, congratulations, uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Dr. Ali is the secretary of uh, Trivendram City Branch now. Thank you, sir. Sir, we can precurize the patient before giving succinate calling to decrease the uh, rise of intra-abdominal pressure as well as intraocular pressure, etc. Yeah, definitely. Those are the preventive yeah. measures. Son. Do you, I think you uh, mentioned that when the discussion was going yeah. upon the use I of such for uh, yeah. this one. Yeah, I definitely precurization. Those old methods are always very helpful. And uh, I think because uh, at many operation theatres throughout India, succamethonium is at least available on 50% of the tables, still used. Many people are using it and 90% of the tables in the periphery still being used by everyone. It's a drug which nobody can discard. Many people want to say, label it as a, you know, drug causing hyperkalemia, causing arrhythmia, causing so many other morbidities, but still used by almost 90% of the anesthesiologists in the private practice. So I think uh, no harm in using of that drug because we always try to prevent the, you know, the new drugs they are, that they are superior or you having a rocuronium and then the sugamadex and everything. But succamethonium, nobody can replace if somebody has to write an article on it. You can come up with 10 good efficiency, uh, good points and with 4 or 5 negative points. Still, I think it weighs in benefit for succamethonium. Uh, it is a tendency of many newcomers to discard it. But I think you ask Lalit sir also, he will still be very happy to use it whenever he gets a chance to. But definitely, each, every case, easily available and yeah. economic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, could Madhuri wants to add something? She, she yeah, yeah I just wanted to add to that. Dr. Mohan Patak <coughs> was talking about methylene blue for diagnosis uh, during the uh, parathyroid adenoma excision. So that is a very well known method, sir. What you have told, but this yes, uh, this application of methylene blue here, uh, this is uh, has been documented in literature. And it is an upcoming modality to treat refractory hypotension of all kinds, like not only during pheochromocytoma excision, but even for the treatment of anaphylactic shock. And as sir said, even during COVID times. So it has been used yeah. in children, adults, and all age groups it has been tried. And as I told you, in the dose of IV, 1 to 2 milligram per kg bolus, it is given. And uh, one more thing I would like to add that pulmonary artery catheter, uh, pulmonary artery pressures monitoring is also very important intraoperatively because many of the cases can land with pulmonary edema and uh, cases of pulmonary edema have been reported even in pregnant patients with pheochromocytoma undergoing cesarean section so intraoperatively if you do tee and uh, measure the pulmonary artery pressures and even the systemic vascular resistance because the catecholamines are going to alter the systemic vascular resistance. So the levels are going to uh, fluctuate uh, intraoperatively. So we might as well measure the systemic vascular resistance intra. That is if all these modalities are available, of course. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. More importantly, I think uh, the availability of these gadgets and equipment is in the selected institutions only. But saying that uh, we cannot refer all these cases to those institutions, then how will we learn? Because, see, it was being resected in the four decades earlier also. It's being resected now also. The safety of anesthesia has gone like anything to the northward. So uh, I think uh, 
those if you have those modalities best is the best thing you can have you you will be you know very 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 meticulous in everything in every step but uh, if we start referring every patient to only those center where these modalities are available then entire indian uh, anesthesiologist may not be able to see the cases of pheochromocytoma i think in every medical college has got almost cvp line you can always have that dr nishan mentioned you can easily put a cvp line you can monitor the cvp invariably some institutions having the uh, arterial mo line modem modem also you can go for the invasive blood pressure monitoring also plus other modalities are there i think with the uh, availability of that's what i was asking azu when the seniors people are standing there so you can always eat up their head asking on every step why we are done like this why we are doing like this so these are the way of learning also that's how you learn in these type of scenarios and cases Uh, sir, I have an important question to ask. I have not, faced. Not to me, please. <laughs> uh, uh, if the uh, suppose there is a patient, uh, what type of consent should be taken? Should we take high risk consent when the patient is preoperatively optimized? I have faced myself. The surgeon said you cannot take high risk consent. No, See, whatever. Explain consent. Whatever. Explain uh, consent. Consent Pro is here. always whether you prepare it or not. <laughs> Not Lali is right. Not Lali sir is right. Actually, the consent is always high risk. Whatever you preparing for your betterment of uh, the anesthesia and surgical period for the safety of the patient. But uh, considering that, even still, the chances are there. There are uh, you know so many things happening inside the body: the meta metabolic reaction, the mm -hmm. molecular mechanism, the catecholamine balances. They are mm -hmm. they are you know swaying like anything in these type of cases. How much better you may have prepared. But still, the chances are there that your patient can go to any extreme, the high yes. sport, yes. Hyper, yes. to other things. So it's always better because any hypo or hyper can cause damage. Mm -hmm. You may not, be, you can't do the, you know, the angiography. You can't do the CTO NG of the brain or MRI NG to see the aneurysms are there. You can't see that hypo, how much arteries are blocked in these type of patient. You can't do the angiography preoperative in these patients. So many things can be there in the body, which can disturb the uh, homeostasis milieu. The pathophysiology of the body, you may not be able to well verse with this pre-anesthetic checkup. There are so many diagnostic modalities which are not feasible in these patients because if we start doing every, everything, then I don't think the patient will get operated also. So the high risk is... Uh, we are justified. Much. We are justified yeah, always. in uh, always, always. asking for high risk consent. Yeah, don't go to the surgeon. Surgeon is not going to handle after the surgery. It's you. You are going to handle because invariably pheochromocytoma is operated where issues availability is there. There. I, I, I think that is a very much agreeable by almost every anesthesiologist now it is being mm -hmm. operated in those setups only so it's always yeah. better to take high risk yes sir on legal part we have to explain the patient present condition what can be occurred during intra -op, what is management and what risk may be maybe in percentage yes, yes. as per law it has to be mentioned in consent then you are safe yes mm -hmm. definitely sir Thank you, sir. <clears throat> if nothing is there, then I will at least have to share something important. Screen is uh, visible? Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, Alka, ma'am, I think uh, you, well, I, there are no words to express the presentation today. So really, uh, and we all at the national level and I guess national thankful to you for bringing up your team for discussing a very important case. This case has been recorded. It will be it can be played on YouTube anytime you can go to see the recording. Any student can go see the recording anytime before their examination. They can prepare their, themselves for the questioning also. So Alka ma'am, this is a, a felicitation from our side, from uh, the coordinators, uh, Dr. Madhuri, Dr. Nishan, myself and uh, other. And Dr. Swati and Dr. Devolina Rai. So we are presenting you with the felicitation certificate, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Dr. Neil, uh, equally, you are also the partner in crime. So we will also like to felicitate <laughs> you also. So the same way, I think uh, I, I think associate professor, they work a little more harder because they have to see other aspects of also the preparations. So Dr. Neil, thank you very much for preparing Arzu for this uh, class also. 
थैंक यू सर आरजू यू आर गुड कॉन्फिडेंट and uh, i think you sent a good message to the pg students uh, that confidence uh, shows that you are under a very good hands of atol madam and team the way they prepared you so you are i think uh, will pass in the flying colors in the coming examination also thank you so much best wishes yes, best sir. wishes thank you so much dr swati she is a uh, you know she is uh, her husband and myself we were both uh, batchmates in during the mdms in our gmc patela so so she has always been a very keen and she is a very good orator and very she has good communication skills so today she it was her debut as a senior coordinator so thank you Swati, thank you very much for everything and uh, for all your knowledge and skills for holding this class thank you sir for giving me the opportunity sir thank you sir deserve it actually and devolina where are you yes, <laughs> you sir. did good you you are confident now i think you are exposed to the national scene also so you will be continuing with this type of presentation in the coming days thank yes. you very much devlina for uh, being a coordinator of this class thank you sir thank you so much sir and uh, best thanks to dr madhuri and dr nishan for preparing all these things so meticulously because these classes uh, they look very simple but it, it there are a lot of hard work goes in preparing these classes the dress rehearsal the questionnaire the things the other parts logistics so many things are there thank you anil or at least uh, uh, thank to dr madhuri and dr nishan for this wonderful preparation for this class thank you thank sir. you so much sir, sir and your team It was excellent yeah. in conducting this case thank you ma'am yeah thank anybody you. wants to add anything before we finally leave okay i will and we one thing uh, next class will be we will go to basics once again so the cycle will start again uh, the next class will be pre operative preparation pre operative uh, you know the anesthetic checkup how the things are to be done so that's very important because the pgs who will be appearing in the final examination for them it's very very important to go into minute details of pre anesthetic checkup and preparation and hale you will be presenting next class as a senior coordinator <laughs> because you have already presented okay unmute yourself and say now you have to present it yes sir yes sir your academic responsibilities also yes, increase with the administrative responsibilities okay so uh, any 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 anyone else want to say something hmm. yeah i think i want to say okay please i want to say that uh, arzu uh, do you know what yes, is sir. endocrine anesthesia so this terminology was uh, drafted by bajwa sir only several several years back when he had already written that endocrine anesthesia is an upcoming speciality and you are really fortunate that you have presented it before sir who has got the maximum number of publications related to endocrine anesthesia i think uh, i think that must be uh, it's a real and, honor for you and, and uh, he just told in the beginning of the talk that he he is he he is not going to contribute but he is the one who has got the maximum knowledge in endocrine anesthesia so thank you sir and uh, thank you dr madhuri for being a, dr madhuri is the co-author with me in uh, lee synopsis of anesthesia also uh, mm -hmm. the thyroid surgery is so anesthesia for thyroid surgery we have you covered everything and, in that endocrines uh, in thyroid parathyroids and your... you can see the latest issue of uh, yes. lee synopsis it's there the chapter is there now everything is there yeah That's definitely cool. it was shown in the class on so you have imparted so much of experience and the uh, critical clinical pearls in this case also yes. that's what my experience counts as lali sir yeah. is there you are there so see the experienced people are there dr mohan patak sir is there and so we are on the same lines uh, moving ahead with these type of experiences and sir, every it's our week. duty it's our duty to share our experience yeah definitely sir definitely it enriches the experience it enriches the uh, knowledge of the everyone who is attending the class so dr madhuri you want to say again something no 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 i don't i wanted to lower <laughs> my hand okay sorry <laughs> so anyway so thank you everyone for being in this thank class thank you sir Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We always end by saying, "Long live IS." Long live IS. Long live IS. Long live IS.